Hi everyone, and welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for May the 23rd. Since my last TCC from May the 20th on Ben Eager Beaver, the Canucks and Sharks have split games 3 and 4 in San Jose, with special teams playing a huge role in both games. Also, since my last TCC, I've been elevated to featured contributor status on Canucks.com, thanks in large part to your feedback, your viewership, and support. So thank you. As well, I joined the team at Canucks Hockey Blog, where I'll be writing a regular blog called Things That Make You Go Hmm. I'll be taking a regular look at the Canucks and aspects of their games that may make us wonder whether it be a strange play, puzzling coaching decision, or bizarre call, for example. So for this CCC, I'm going to do a video version of my written blog. If you're at least a teenager in the late 80s and early 90s, then you'll likely remember the Arsenio Hall show. He wore funky clothes, he had the flat top, he had the dog pound, and they all went like this. And one of Arsenio's regular features occurred when the host would ponder certain thoughts. And this recurring segment was the inspiration behind the CNC Music Factory's top 10 hit, Things That Make You Go Home, in 1990. So as I reflect on the Canucks 4-2 victory in Game 4, here are a few things that make you go, hmm. Does Keith Ballard give hip check lessons? Hmm. I was happy to see Keith Ballard in the lineup, although it was due to injuries to Erhoff and Rome. Nevertheless, I was hopeful that Ballard would have a strong game and regain some of his confidence. Ballard's shots weren't overly impressive. One shot, minus one in 10.34 of ice time. However, he had the best hit of the night as he sent Sharks forward and Canuck D-killer, Jamie McGinn, head over heels with a devastating hip check. I immediately flashed back to some of Ballard's other big hip checks from the season and again wondered why he doesn't play more. I then wanted to find out if Ballard threw out these types of hip checks back in Florida and Phoenix. Well, YouTube provides more than enough video evidence. He has always been a hip checking machine. Check out these bone crunchers on Evgeny Malkin, Scott Hartnell, and the immortal Jack Skilly. I've listed the links below. The Chris Tanev effect. Hmm. It came as quite a surprise when defenseman Chris Tanev played in game four ahead of veteran Andrew Alberts, especially when Coach AV initially said that Tanev would be in San Jose only for insurance. Well, the Canucks cashed in their insurance policy and inserted Tanev into the lineup as Ballard's partner on the blue line. Now, similar to Ballard, Tanev's stats were rather pedestrian, a bunch of zeros in all categories in 9.13 of ice time. But more importantly, he essentially played error-free hockey and played well beyond his years, considering that this was only the 30th professional game of his young career. And with Bieksa, Erhoff, and Salo all becoming free agents this summer, the Canucks might feel okay letting at least one of them go with players like Chris Tanev, Kevin Connaughton, and Jan Sove looking to crack the lineup. Where is Alex Edler? Hmm. Since a monster performance against the Blackhawks and a decent series against Nashville, Edler has been very unnoticeable in this series against the Sharks. He has only one point in the four games. And while I admit he's not necessarily called to rack up points, he hasn't laid out any of the Sharks forwards yet with hits like he dished out in the two previous series. Perhaps he is still feeling the effects of his mid-season back surgery, or maybe AV's penchant of riding his top 4D with heavy ice time is starting to affect him. Regardless, the Canucks will need him to ramp up his play a little bit if they do as expected and advance to the Stanley Cup Finals. Game 5 goes Tuesday night at Rogers Arena, and it should be a good one, with the Canucks looking to improve on their dismal record of 2 wins and 4 losses in elimination games in this 2011 postseason. Meanwhile, the Sharks will look to stave off elimination. And lastly, have you ever noticed that no one uses the term stave off unless they are talking about sports playoffs? I've never heard it used in everyday conversation. Yet another thing that makes me go, hmm. God bless and go Canucks go.